My husband and mother-in-law chuckled and pulled out a piece of paper. It contained absurd terms like interesting the house to my husband and not complaining, and even had my mother's signature on it. I could only think someone scammed and forced her to sign. This is completely invalid. This is clearly a scam. Yes, this is my handwriting. My mother calmly admitted. Without understanding, we were kicked out of the house, handed a filled out divorce form. My husband looked at me with hopeful eyes. Did he think I would cling to him? I will never look back. He will understand eventually. As I clenched my teeth, my mother muttered beside me, this is happiness. My name is Jessica. I am a 53-year-old housewife who works part-time. Lately, my main issue has been severe hand eczema. My husband is a businessman. We live at my parents' place together with them. We have no children. However, a bigger issue troubles me more than my eczema. It's the possibility that my mother might be developing dementia. I say possibility because she hasn't been officially diagnosed yet, but her memory and judgment are noticeably declining. She often forgets things and sometimes can't even recall what she has forgotten. Sometimes she completely changes personality and behaves unpredictably. There are days when such things happen repeatedly, and there are also perfectly calm days with nothing unusual. She used to be hardworking and attentive. Ever since she injured her knee, she has mostly stayed indoors, and her condition seems to have worsened gradually. Her knee pain has healed, but for safety, I don't want her to go out alone. My father and I continue to live our daily lives while taking care of her. While I'm at my part-time job, my father watches over her at home so he can respond immediately if anything happens. I'm worried about her symptoms worsening and feeling anxious about my uncooperative husband. We need to come up with a plan for the future. One day my father became seriously ill and needed long-term hospitalization, making it impossible to leave my mother alone. It wasn't like I could afford to take time off from work. When I talked to my husband about it, he reacted as if it was someone else's problem, saying, you worry too much. Fires can start from unattended flames, and she could get lost. You worry too much. What if something happens? If you start worrying about that, there's no end to it. My husband clearly seemed annoyed. He's lived with my mother for a long time, but this attitude was too much. After all, the reason we were living together was because of my husband's insufficient income and we were staying as dependents. Even a crane would feel the urge to repay a favor. Doesn't he have that kind of consideration at all? Then, why don't you quit your job and take care of her? It's not that simple. Even though it was just a part-time job, I had no intention of quitting my long-term position. The income was decent, and it made me want to ask him if he would support me. I think we can live as we have up till now, if we use care services and with your cooperation. Why me? Just occasionally would be enough. But, it's your mother, right? That's true, but still. It has nothing to do with me, handle it yourself. That way of speaking is, first of all, is her condition bad enough to need care services? That's for the hospital too. You've been complaining about your hand eczema and the pain from standing at your part-time job at the beauty salon for a long time. Just quit already. My husband smacked his lips in annoyance and left immediately. How terrible. I do have hand eczema, but I never said I wanted to quit. It angered me to have my beloved job belittled. I knew this time would come someday. You say it has nothing to do with you, but that can't be true. We're family. I even thought about doing the same if his mother were in the same situation. It was infuriating, but there was nothing I could do. I was able to be flexible because I worked part-time. It's still a long way from now, but when my mother will be in need of help with changing clothes or bathing, she will likely resist. If I quit being a hairstylist at this age, returning to the field will be difficult. Trends and chemicals constantly change, making it hard to keep up. I even have clients who specifically request me. But there are many other hairstylists, yet only I can take care of my mother. Feeling down won't change the situation. I must stay positive and keep moving. Once my father is discharged from the hospital, we should be able to return to our previous life. And to do so, I will have my mother thoroughly examined at the hospital, have a serious talk with my husband, apply for caregiving services, and plan for the future. I really don't want to quit my job. I plan to ask for some time off for a while. A few days after making that decision, my father, who had been hospitalized, suddenly passed away. I couldn't believe it. When a relative dies, there's no time, not even for mourning. Preparations for the funeral and numerous procedures are needed one after another. My mother was devastated, sometimes looking dazed like a child and occasionally bursting into tears, unable to control her emotions. Dressed in mourning clothes, my mother seemed transformed, fulfilling her role as the chief mourner with dignity. 
I also did my best to support her, staying by her side throughout. It was quick but we got to send off my father. For the first time, we truly felt the loneliness of his absence, both emotionally and physically exhausted. He wasn't talkative, but I remember my kind-hearted father. I understand that he is gone, but his chair, teacup, reading glasses, and the novel he was halfway through reading were still as they were left. Neither my mother nor I were ready to put these things away yet. It was at this time that my husband brought his parents over. Indeed, he had said this morning that he would bring them to help clean up the house. While I appreciated the thought, I was not ready yet, so I decided to decline their help and just serve them tea before asking them to leave. My mother seemed quite tired and soon began dozing off. I wanted to leave her undisturbed. I led my in-laws to the dining room and prepared tea. My husband demanded, not tea, make coffee and bring out something sweet. I momentarily thought, these are your parents. Why don't you handle it? But harboring resentment for long is pointless. I've decided to live positively. Let's call a service to dispose of the large items quickly. Let's do that, said my mother-in-law and husband. I wish they wouldn't decide everything on their own. I'm sorry, but I'm not ready to clean up yet. What? My mother-in-law was surprised. Let's postpone it for a little while longer. What? My mother and I are emotionally not ready yet. When I explained this, my mother-in-law looked doubtful and argued, that's troublesome. We can't do that. I couldn't understand why it would be troublesome for her. I looked at my husband for his reaction, but he avoided my gaze. The house has already been passed on to the eldest son and his wife. The renovations are about to start soon. And what about where we will go? I'm sorry. I don't quite understand what you mean. Suddenly, my husband declared, from now on, I'll live here with my parents. What are you talking about? Everything has already been decided. What? But this is my home. I was bewildered, and my husband wouldn't look me in the eyes. Jessica, didn't you know? My mother-in-law joined as if it were obvious. I did tell you. You probably forgot because you were busy with the funeral, my husband stated calmly. There's no way I would miss hearing such an important information, no matter how busy I was. I have no idea what you are talking about, and you can't do this without my consent. Your consent isn't needed anymore. It's already resolved. What do you mean? I've already settled it with your mother. I felt as if cold water had been splashed on me. When did such a discussion even happen? Could it be that they decided this while my mother was out of her senses? This can't be allowed. I stood there, stunned. My mother-in-law addressed my husband. You know, someone who has quit their job and does nothing, and an old person who needs lots of care can be a handful, right? My husband nodded in agreement. That's right. That's why you two need to leave this house, and preferably soon. I was too shocked by her words to even respond. Someone who does nothing and an old person who needs lots of care? Is she referring to my mother and me? Why do we have to leave? This is my parents' house. Please take that back. Oh, Jessica, don't make such a scary face. I am still working, and I'm not being dependent. My mother does not have dementia. That's completely false. I cannot tell lies, haha. <laughs> How can she laugh and say that? My head was spinning. While smiling, my husband and my mother-in-law pulled out a document. There's no taking it back. We've already got the signatures on paper. The document contained absurd terms like interesting the house to my husband and not complaining, and even had my mother's signature on it. Indeed, it was my mother's signature. I could only think it was a scam that forced her to sign. This is completely invalid. This is clearly a scam. Huh? Did you make her sign this while she was not in her right mind? That's invalid. What are you talking about? You just said that she doesn't have dementia. He retorted. At that moment, my mother, who should have been sleeping until just before, appeared. Hello everyone, what brings you here today? My mother greeted everyone cheerfully, without any prior indication. This signature is your handwriting, isn't it? You did sign here, right? My husband suddenly pressed my mother. Yes, this is my handwriting, my mother smoothly acknowledged. This is a despicable tactic. Now that you understand, pack your things quickly and leave the house. Impossible. If you continue to stay here, I'll call the police for trespassing. I was threatened. This situation was too unreasonable. Without getting to the bottom of it, we were driven out of the house, while holding a completed divorce form. My husband looked at me with a smirk, as if expecting something. It was as if he thought I would cling to him. I tried hard not to meet his eyes, holding back my anger. When leaving the house, I wanted to take at least one of my father's belongings, and what I managed to get was a pair of leather shoes that were at hand. I remember how lovingly my father had cared for them. Though men's shoes may be of no use, 
it was better than leaving with nothing. My mother and I got into the car and just kept driving aimlessly. Anger towards my husband and his parents, sadness over what I had lost, and a vague sense of anxiety mixed together, carrying an immense sense of despair, I wondered how my mother and I would go on from here. It seemed impossible to have hope anymore. I couldn't stop my tears. Then, my mother, who had been quiet all along, murmured softly, This is happiness. Even after my father's sudden death and being driven out of the house, my mother expressed emotions opposite to mine. Could she be confused? Complex emotions different from anger welled up in me, and I found no words to reply, but my mother continued. It feels refreshing. Unnecessary things naturally drift away, and you don't hold any regrets, do you? But I do have attachments to my childhood home. When I responded bluntly, my mother laughed and said, That old, big house is falling apart. Why do they even like it? It's hard to maintain and dispose of, but it's lucky that they're taking it off our hands. Her optimistic attitude was surprising. I wanted dad to live longer. What are you talking about? It was better this way. I didn't want to make your father sad. What about the furniture and appliances that you liked and chose? Aren't you sad to let those go? We can just buy new ones. That's the fun part. Aren't you upset being called a senile old person? That's a path everyone will follow. What the? Even though I felt like we had lost everything, my mother was remarkably calm. Annoyed, I thought that she would probably forget what was said today very soon. I'm truly happy when you're by my side. My mother said, if you weren't here, maybe I would have followed your father. She added, mom, don't worry, it's okay. She said, and then she started dozing off again. She was childlike in her innocence. Yes, it's enough that I remember the things my mother forgets. Although I'm not fully recovered yet. Being with my mother makes me feel like I can manage somehow. Right after that, I received a message from my husband. If you beg me, I might forgive you. It shouldn't be a problem to put your mother in a facility. He said, huh? He might forgive me? Did I do something wrong? It was clear they intended to treat me as a maid. Not wanting to talk anymore, I answered, that's fine, and ended the call. After that, my mind cleared up. Actually, I no longer needed my husband. I explained the situation to my part-time job and decided to become an independent hairstylist. Using my savings, I acquired a used single-family home in the town next door. That house had previously been used as both a residence and a hair salon. The owner of my part-time job helped arrange the purchase, and I got it for an unbelievably low price. The place allowed me to work while taking care of my mother at home. The owner also greatly supported me when I needed equipment and renovations for the shop, saying, Jessica has supported us for a long time. That kindness deeply touched my weary heart. I used up all my savings for the opening, but I had no regrets. I had given up on owning my salon because my husband was against it, but it was my long-held dream. Whether I'll succeed is unknown. The anger towards my husband and his parents hadn't completely disappeared. However, the business helped distract me from those feelings, and the excitement of new challenges outweighed them. I won't look back. I have finally opened my own hair salon, a dream I've held for many years. My mother helped with cleaning and laundry at the salon. She enjoyed gardening in her free time. Talking with neighbors became part of our daily routine. It really helped that they promoted the shop. The time I spend daydreaming also decreased. Just as my new life rhythm with my mother calmed down, I received a message from my husband. Why aren't you contacting me? What? I said I would forgive you, didn't I? Come back home immediately. What are you talking about? Don't be stubborn when you're struggling. My husband scoffed as he spoke. I tilted my head. Am I really struggling? Me? Where did you hear such a rumor? I heard you opened your own salon. It's impossible for an older hairstylist to manage alone, especially with a mother with dementia. That must be duff. I've worked as a hairstylist for a long time and had many regular customers. My salon was located in the center of a residential area, so it was not uncommon for passersby to stop. I wish he would stop with the baseless speculations. In fact, I was making much more now than when I was working part-time. If there's nothing more to discuss, I'm hanging up. Wait for me. What? Uh. I want to return your father's belongings, so could you come to the house? What? The belongings of my father that I could hardly take with me. My mother had said, memories are enough, so I had given up, but if there was still something left, I indeed wanted to keep it. I left my mother with a neighbor and headed to my childhood home for the first time in a while. At that moment, I had forgotten how terrible my husband had been and was even feeling thankful for some reason. The scene at the entrance of my childhood home was bizarre, with unnecessary cardboard boxes piled up and mud and dead leaves left as they were. 
I was surprised to see the house so dirty, and my ex-husband came out from inside. Hey, long time no see. I'm short on time. Please hand over the belongings quickly. Come in and take them. It had been a long time since I returned to my childhood home, and it was so dirty that I hesitated to even take off my shoes. It's troublesome with things scattered around. Mom can't clean it up. In the previous residence, the wife of the eldest son was in charge of cleaning. While he complained, I wondered why he wouldn't clean up himself. He was still a person lacking compassion. But that was irrelevant to me now. I no longer had any attachment to a residence ravaged by others. What used to be the living room had now become my husband's sleeping area. It was quite messy, with remnants of snacks and drinks scattered about, and an unpleasant smell lingered. It made me not even want to breed. This is filthy. I said it without thinking, and my husband responded, right? That's why you should come and clean. Suddenly he said something absurd. Really, if you had apologized earlier, it wouldn't have gotten this bad. What? For $15 per hour, you could clean up. It's a good deal, you'd make some money too. The smiling face of my ex-husband was right in front of me. Yes, he thought I was struggling with money. It didn't seem worth arguing, and I wanted to get away quickly. I refuse. Please hand over my father's belongings now. Ah, that. It seems my mother accidentally threw them away. So that's what was going on. I wasn't exactly suspecting a lie, but it was a gamble. And indeed, it was disappointing. Disappointing. But this made my decision clear. I had nothing more to expect from this residence or my husband. As I was about to leave, my husband blocked the way. How annoying. Please move. Wait, don't be mad. It's okay for you to come back, just you. What? Really? You're such a bother. You should have just complied. Listen, this is your last chance. I don't understand. What are you dissatisfied with? If you need a maid, you should hire someone else. Hey, don't get ahead of yourself. What can a part-time worker do? I felt insulted. It was ridiculous. Had he forgotten? I worked part-time because he disliked it. He didn't like it when my income increased. I supported him so he could focus on his career, but now I was fed up with being looked down upon as just a part-time worker. You're in the way. What? I said you're in the way. You can't do anything with your meager salary. What? Ask your beloved mother to clean. Stunned, my husband watched as I left the house. Ah, uh, I feel lighter. Seeing my drastically changed home, I no longer felt any attachment. Although I was disappointed that nothing was left of my father's belongings. It was better than being held captive by it. The look of surprise on my husband's face was something to see. Now, let's go home quickly. My mother is waiting. Later, I received a job offer from the owner of the beauty salon where I used to work. It was for a mobile beauty role, providing home visit services for clients who need care and can't make it to the salon. I registered with the local government and visited homes upon requests from community residents. Sometimes, work was also required at care facilities. There are hairstylists who specialize in this service. Since I also had repeat customers at my own salon, taking on this job once a week would be manageable. However, I had a mother who I couldn't leave alone. Lately, she's been well, but she didn't like going out often. Why not? I'll come with you and help out. My mother suggested when I was pondering. I usually thought of an assistant as an apprentice hairstylist, but this was an eye-opening idea. That's right. We could go out together. The doctor said the same thing. Actively interacting with society and living an active life is optimal for preventing dementia. It's important not to just worry, but to try things out. So, I decided to take on this job a few times a week, while at clients' homes. My mother helped with tidying up and served as a conversation partner for the clients, greatly aiding as an assistant. She was active and attentive, just like she used to be. No more absent-mindedness. Then, one day, my husband showed up at the salon. What did you come for? While it was inevitable that the location of my shop got known, would he intentionally come to show malice? When will he stop being a nuisance? As if to protect my mother, I hid her behind me and held my phone ready to dial 911 to call the police. Um, could you give me a shampoo and cut? Don't fool around. What do you want? You see, I received an eviction notice from the real estate agent. What? You sold that land and house, didn't you? I can't think of any such thing. What do you mean? They thought it was an abandoned house and sent a cleaning crew, this is no joke. So that was it. It was my mother's doing. My mother had let go of the family home. Or had the change of ownership she mentioned before been completed? Wait a minute. The only thing my mother signed was that suspicious contract. Did you think that homemade documents settled everything? I thought you were incompetent. But not to this extent. I'm at a loss for words. 
Give it back. That's my house. And it seems the demolition has already started. I don't know anything about that. Are you going to kick my elderly parents out of their home? You there say that after you took my mother's house. I don't care. Then I'll make this house my own. Owning a salon and having a maid, isn't that perfect? My husband opened the door to the house attached to the shop. Don't enter without permission. Just as I was about to call the police. What? My husband suddenly calmed down. What's this? Pointing to the leather shoes of my father left in the entrance, he asked with a trembling voice, Is there someone new already? This morning, I had taken them out of the box on a whim and felt like polishing them. He probably didn't realize they belonged to my father. Well, that would be expected. The husband who didn't notice when I cut my hair by 8 inches wouldn't remember whose shoes those are. Are you cheating on me? Even though I'm still here. Huh? We've been separated for a while. Who is it? I can't forgive this. My husband turned red with anger. Can't forgive. What does he mean by that? What is he thinking? I smirked inwardly. Perhaps it wouldn't be so bad to scare someone who behaves so selfishly. Are you ready? Eh? Are you prepared to face what's coming? You should know from those expensive shoes. Half-heartedness will lead to painful consequences. I stared intently at my husband's face. He was sweating, his eyes darting around, unable to hide his agitation. I can't believe that my cowardly yet prideful husband was really prepared for this. You're awfully quiet, what's wrong? Should I call him now? What? Call? What? Is someone there? Hey darling, can you come here, please? Goodbye. My husband ran off like a whirlwind. My mother covered her face with her hands, trying to suppress her laughter. Ahaha, look, how fast he can run away. I felt a sense of relief, my tension going away. My mother kept laughing. Ahahaha. I wonder who did you call? Your acting was marvelous. Hearing this, I also started giggling. I doubt my husband will come here again. Thank you, dad, for your help. It was, of course, my mother's doing that our former house was sold. You wouldn't really go through with changing the ownership, would you? Did you know everything? Of course. Signing that document couldn't possibly have any effect. That was the plan from the start. I just thought it might be difficult to proceed if they knew about the dementia, so I was just watching how things would go. My mother said this without any doubt in her eyes. I was surprised she was aware she had cognitive impairment, but then she added, Lately, my mind has become clearer as if the fog had lifted. I think I'm getting better. I still forget things, but I've always been like that. But to easily give up our home. Oh, it was your father's idea to sell that house. The plan was to sell it after you both moved out and then moved to a convenient apartment near the station. Really? Life doesn't always go as planned, does it? That's true. Reflecting back, the signs of dementia began to appear when my mother started to become housebound. Being naturally energetic, she seemed suited to interacting with people and staying active both mentally and physically. I hope she continues to stay healthy. I have torn my own pocket money as an assistant, she said, so it seems I don't need to worry for a while. As for my ex-husband and his parents, they tried to return to their previous home but were not welcomed by the eldest son and his wife. Given the difficult personality of my mother-in-law who disliked cleaning, and my self-centered and unhygienic ex-husband, it's no wonder they were refused. The house was already in the name of the eldest son and they couldn't touch it. The relationship between my ex-husband and his parents seems to have deteriorated, with both sides placing blame on the other. My ex-husband was blamed for losing their place to live, you need to take responsibility. Out of necessity, he bought a used house with an unreasonable mortgage, but knowing his savings and income, it seemed reckless to me. He will have to live frugally to pay off the debt. The new home already looked like a trash house, and they had just moved in. They also got scolded by the strict neighborhood association president for stacking garbage bags in front of the house, and were disliked by the neighbors. They really needed to clean up, Honestly, it's none of my business and I don't care much, but I hope they don't bother others. And you know what? His parents are still healthy. They should work to support their low-income son. If they don't want to be scolded, they will at least have to clean up by themselves. It should also have good effects for preventing dementia.